Hey guys, I'm here today with my teacher Jage, and um, I am basically going to be, me and my teacher Jage are going to be talking about D-Day and how risky the Allies were when they took the risk to continue with the process of D-Day and how much they prepared and how much it just, how much they prepared still didn't work out in their favor. Necessarily since they won the battle, it's okay, but you know, it could be it could have turned out way different and we're just gonna talk about facts and opinions and I'm gonna put my two cents in but he's gonna start. Anyways, if you guys like this video, just click a like button. If you guys don't like it, don't just click the um not like button and then basically if depending on how many people like the video, I will do more. Like, comment, subscribe and here we go. Alright. Um the invasion of Normandy is one point at which uh, a lot of things hinged on a very short moment in time and things could have gone, completely, they really could have gone completely differently. Um, I know that history sometimes, history class gets a feeling of, well, things just happened in order and it was inevitable. But there are many moments like this that people like to talk about where things could have been very different. And this one here is maybe you saw when we were watching The Longest Day. Um, the Germans were really, really heavily dug in all along the beach, right? Yeah, they had very, very deep trenches, very, very, very strong, um, like cement and just very strong bunkers. And if the they c the Allies could have took them out by bombing them with their destroyers, but the fact is, they could have did that, but they could have put at the risk also of killing their own people and it was also very hard to see them when and if they were to attack the bunkers because they were so far away yeah so. yeah and and in fact at this point the destroyers are shooting from a, a moving ship so you know as the ship moves they don't have radar guided um, artillery like they do in the Navy now so it's nowhere near as accurate um, and you needed to put the soldiers in there. And on four of the beaches, things went much more smoothly. But on Omaha Beach in particular, um, the soldiers there were ready and waiting, and it was an incredibly, incredibly difficult fight. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for... If it wasn't... If, like, also... Never mind about that, but also... In the beginning, everyone thought, oh, well, allies were going to attack, but then the Germans, but then the, everyone's, all the Germans in the bunkers close to the, um, play, uh, the beach saw everyone coming and tried to warn everyone. Everyone's like, oh, no, that's not happening, no. Uh, it's definitely not happening. So basically, like, no one believed them until bombs started going off and they just let them listen to, like, the bombs and the stuff going off. And that actually caused the Germans a lot. Mm -hmm. It did. The delays that were involved were incredible. They didn't have cell phones and videos, and they couldn't send images back to let people know what was happening. And the Allies had deliberately tried to mislead the Germans. There were two possible landing spots, Normandy and Pas de Calais, which was much, much, close, much closer to England, and kept the Germans guessing. And even during the first moments of Normandy, many generals still thought it was a diversion and they shouldn't move their troops away from Pas de Calais where they were prepared. And and I and when the Germans started to like talk to to the oh my god they're coming they're coming, um, the resistance people who were hiding among the Germans, mm -hmm. who were trained actually was cutting power lines, blowing up power lines, yeah, and the just, cell phone lines too. Cell phone lines just destroying mm -hmm. everything that will help the Germans win the battle, mm -hmm. and that helped the Allies dearly. Mm -hmm. Very dearly. Without that, we could have had a possible chance of losing World War II. If the Germans had been coordinated, if they had been able to use their troops the way they had planned, um, it would have been much more difficult for the Allies. Many more people would have died. It's possible that the landing could actually have failed. And as I told you earlier, Eisenhower actually had a written out speech in case this landing failed so that he would have it ready to give where he accepted blame for the planning and for going poorly and, and losing because this was 6,000 sh ships, 250,000 soldiers. This is an immense uh, invasion. Attempt. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just before we continue, I just want to say um, this, I have don't have that much time left in class at all. So 
Well, I'm going to be posting another, like, part two and maybe a part three of this. So we can continue this conversation because we are actually watching um, D Day, a D Day movie. It's called The Longest Day. The Longest Day, yes. I actually mm -hmm. forgot that name. Um, basically, we are going to continue watching it. We're in the middle of mm -hmm. the invasion, so we're not quite through the movie, but we already. I pay attention a lot to history because I love like the idea of history. I, as you guys know or maybe don't know, I suck at math. So yeah. But, um, basically, we are going to do part two and part three, but let's continue. Sounds good. All right. Um, so... Time to sign off. All right. Um, let me just say one last thing. Um, if, in fact, we do a part two, um, it will be uploaded within a week or two. I'm not sure exactly how long, maybe or maybe not long. Anyways, um, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. All right.